Georgia Southern football with Coach Paul Johnson. Brought to you in part by Coca-Cola. Always Coca-Cola. Rosier Ford, Lincoln Mercury in Statesboro, the dealership that does business the right way. East Georgia Regional Medical Center, compassionate care without compromise. Hargrey Wireless, private, powerful, perfectly clear. And Sea Island Bank, the better way to bank. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Georgia Southern Football 2000, week number two. And I'm Ted Byrne, along with head coach Paul Johnson. And coach, this week we're home in our house. Well, it feels good to be home and uh, really anxious to play after last week. Uh, we had a tough opponent, and we didn't play as well as we'd like, so we're anxious to try to give it another shot tonight. This week's opponent, Johnson C. Smith, a team that a lot of folks don't really know an awful lot about. It is a Division II school. What do they do? Well, they're a, you know, a balanced offense. Last week, they rushed the ball. They had a running back gain 120 yards, and, and they played in a driving rainstorm, so I don't think they got to throw it as much as they would normally like to, but uh, I think they'd like to be balanced on offense and defensively very similar to the University of Georgia. Uh, no base out of a 4-3 scheme, but end up a lot of eight-man front. How's practice been this week? It was okay, not uh, to where we like to have it, but it's still early in the year, and anxious to go out there tonight and see how our guys are going to play. Healthy, how are we? Well, with the exception of Jimmy McCullough, who we lost, uh, we've got a few guys bumped and bruised a little bit, and uh, a couple guys will be game-time decision. Uh, we may try to hold David Young out. He hadn't practiced all week, and Mike Anderson will play very little, but other than that, we should have everybody available. All right, first half highlights are coming your way, but first, we'll take a look at this week's Coca-Cola Play of the Day. Everybody. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2000. I'm Ted Byrne along with Coach Paul Johnson. Coach, a great opening night win. Uh, uh, over 16,680 folks here. And even though the game gets off to a rough start as we fumble on the first possession, we also make Johnson C. Smith fumble on their first possession. Right. Well, we had a great crowd. I thought we had a, a large number of students. And, uh, you know, the crowd was loud at the end of the game. It was great to, uh, you know, display the, the championship banner. I think that. Uh, you know, we unveiled that tonight, and that was a big deal. And we started off the game and drove the ball right down the field. And, uh, you know, disappointed we got it inside the 10-yard line. It kind of bogged a little bit, and then uh, Jay had an unfortunate fumble. Then uh, they uh, got the ball back, didn't do a whole lot with it. They fumbled as well, and we were able to convert on that fumble. And uh, a four-yard touchdown run got us into the end zone by eight. Right, it was a little pitch play, a little counter option down there. Uh, to the right side, Jay did a nice job getting the ball pitched and uh, AP took it in there. Four plays, uh, 36 yards, ate up a minute 43 of the clock. Then the, the uh, Johnson C. Smith got the ball back on their own 20, but then turned it over. Nick Kearns gets an interception. Yeah, Nick's been uh, playing well for us this fall. He had a good fall camp, and uh, I think he was back there in uh, center field. I believe we were playing some, some too deep, and uh, you know Nick was back there and made a break on the ball, made a good play for us. And again, the Golden Bulls can do nothing with it as they turned it over. And uh, again, we were able to convert uh, as uh, it was a three-play drive that covered 52 yards, uh, 42 seconds, and we completed a 14-yard pass play to Chris Knox. Right, here's some play action on the goal line. Hit a little uh, post wheel right off, uh, off a triple option play. And uh, good to get Chris involved early and you can see him make a catch for some minutes. It seemed like the kicking team did very well tonight. Kickoffs were very, very deep. We put them back in a hole. Uh, the next possession, they got it on their own six-yard line and really couldn't do much with it. Had to punt. Right. Uh, well, we've got two really good kickers, Scott Schultz and Rob Rollins. They're both doing a good job kicking the ball off. And, uh, you know, those guys go down and cover pretty good. And if you'll kick it deep in the end zone the way they've been kicking it over in the corner, it's pretty easy to cover sometimes. On our next possession, Georgia Southern got it at the uh, Johnson C. Smith 27. They are started off the drive with a good six-yard run, followed by Adrian with a seven-yard run. Right, well, we were trying to run some option plays, and, and we didn't go go real deep into the playbook. Uh, in, in all honesty, we weren't executing some of the other plays that, very well. We ran a lot of triple option tonight and uh, just kind of, uh, you know, gave it to the, to the guy that they didn't want to take. And Adrian Peterson again will take it into the end zone, this time on a two-yard run, and uh, that had brought the first quarter to an end. It did, and, uh, you know, other than the first turnover down there on the first drive, all in all, in the first quarter, we had, had not played that poorly. 
when Johnson C. Smith got the ball back on their own 22. Uh, we put the good pressure on them. They really couldn't get a whole lot done. We had some of those 19 penalties that we amassed during the game on this particular drive for them. But then uh, great pressure on them, and they got off a bad punt. Right, and, uh, you know, we knew that they were going to struggle some in the kicking game. And, uh, you know, we were getting some pressure. We really weren't trying to block the front. I think, you know, we, we might have had a chance to do that. Uh, but uh, he just kind of semi-shanked one. It was 21-0 at that point, and Georgia Southern got the ball back on our own 48-yard line. And then uh, we got a great run by Adrian Peterson, a 42-yarder, typically. Oh, it, it was. And once he got into the secondary, he picked up some nice blocks and, uh, you know, made a, a couple of cuts back. And, uh, you know, normally he gets those in the end zone, but this time they got him there. Well, J.R. Revere got the uh, touchdown run on this one. It was an 11-yard touchdown run and uh, got us into the uh, end zone. But penalties forced us to kick a 40-yard point off the touchdown. Right. It was a, we got a celebration penalty. I think Jay kind of high-stepped in the end zone. And, you know, we had two of those tonight, and that's disappointing, you know. You know, those guys understand that that's the rule, and, and uh, we have to do a better job of coaches of, of stopping that. And, uh, you, you know, you're excited when you score, but you can't be self. The Golden Bulls will get the ball again, but the same results. They had to punt it, just did get it away. Georgia Southern got it back, and we really couldn't do much with it. We ended up having to try a 47-yard field goal. Right. Well, we, uh, you know, it started to drive the ball a little bit, and, and normally I would have gone for it, but we haven't kicked that many. Uh, had that many opportunities. We, we still got a kicking battle. Really want to see how we do on the field goal. And, uh, you know, Rob had plenty of leg. He just kind of hooked it a little bit and missed it just left. So the Golden Balls get the ball back this time on their own 30. And uh, they try a run, a couple of passes. But then LeBlanc gets in on a great stop. Good defensive uh, uh, play on this particular uh, possession for them. Yeah, and I thought Robert LeBlanc and, and Freddie Pascata really both played well when they were in there tonight. They didn't play a lot of snaps. And, uh, they made some big plays. Well, in fact, they forced a fumble on that particular drive, and that got Georgia Southern the ball back on our own 49, and then Adrian Peterson would run 18 yards for a touchdown and make it a 35 nothing ball. Right, and, uh, you know, he was just typical Adrian. Uh, you know, once he gets in the secondary, he's a hard guy to bring down, and the good thing about the, about the game is we were able to get him out after the first half. He, you know, he got 17 carries and, and you know, got his yards, and, we're able to rest him a little bit and hopefully have him fresh for the conference when it starts next week. Once again, the defense does a great job on the next possession by the Golden Bulls. They forced the interception. LeVar Rainey, though he didn't get a run back on it, made the interception. Nice play by LeVar. He read the three step. They were trying to go to the quick game, and uh, you know he broke up and made a really good play. On it. And Georgia Southern would get the ball back again with about 54 seconds left and would run the score to a 41 to nothing score as J.R. Revere goes in from one yard out on the run. Right. Uh, they kind of jumped in the gaps, and Jay made a, a little check to take the ball outside down there and did a nice job getting the end. Point after touchdown, though, gets the up Yeah, it was this point. Uh, you know, Scott Sheldon and Robin missed the field goal, so we rotated on Scott's turn, and uh, you know, probably just didn't hit it good. Once again, Georgia Southern in control of the ball game at halftime by a score of 41 to nothing. And uh, what what did you tell the team when you went into uh, to the locker room at halftime? Well, we talked about. Uh, not executing as well on the, on the goal line inside the 10-yard line offensively. Defensively, we'd had some problems getting lined up in a certain formation. And just trying to keep the intensity and focus, and we were, we were going to play a lot of people in the second half, and it was up to them to go out there and continue to play hard and, and finish the game up the way we started. You know, finish it up right and try to execute. And just because uh, we're taking some guys out, you know, there's no reason to fall off. We'll see a lot of fresh faces in the second half. Names maybe you haven't heard before. We'll do all of that in the second half highlights. But first, we want to take a look this week at what game management is like at a Georgia Southern home game.
lot of it was mental mistakes, you know. Some 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 of the penalties were, you know, celebration and personal fouls. I mean, stuff you shouldn't do. And I mean, that really hurts the team when you think about 19 penalties and 200 yards. I mean, you can't win a conference game with 19 penalties. You got to come back on Monday and polish that up also. Well, uh, it seems like, you know, we're on a couple of times we're on the same page today. But we still got a long way to go. I mean, got to get ready for the conference play and everybody's going to be gunning for us. So, you know, we're trying to make a, like a name for ourselves, you know, as last year's team did. You know, we're trying to separate from that, you know, make a name for ourselves this year. And I think uh, the, G the defense is down pretty well together, and I think we're going to be pretty strong throughout the season. Welcome back. Second half highlights coming up. I'm Ted Burnell along with Coach Paul Johnson. Coach, as we said, a lot of fresh faces, new names that got into the ball game. Uh, we didn't really uh, put the uh, first uh, string offense back in to, to start the second half. Well, we took Adrian Peterson out, but we left a lot of the other guys in. We were rolling a lot of offensive linemen and slots and receivers in the first half. And, uh, you know, we came out to, to start the second half and uh, had to kick off to them. We, we went out and had a pretty good series, uh, held them. They punted the ball back to us. I think we got a penalty. Uh, got the ball backed up, and uh, we really wanted to try to work some on our passing game. Came out and hit Chris Blunt on a little air right to start with, and lo and behold, we got a penalty on that, and then we got a hold on the next play, and uh, you know we went back to, to run the option to try to you know get a first down and move the ball some, and uh, Anthony Williams broke a long run for us. He did indeed, 84 yards, a big time scamper, and. Uh, he really got the crowd excited with that, but then again, we had penalties, and we had to uh, get a 35-yard point after that. Right, and uh, again, uh, you know, the celebration penalty, in, in my mind, may not be the, the, the right thing, but it's the rule, and our guys understand that rule, and, you know, it's like I told them, when you score it, you know, you need to act like you've been there before. It's not like that, uh, you know, you just won a lottery or uh, got the final question on who wants to be a millionaire. The Golden Bulls managed to get in the end zone, put together a drive. Right, and, uh, you know, they hit a, a nice pass play that uh, we had pretty good coverage. Just missed time to jump. I think we lost contain on the quarterback and a little time to throw. And they kicked off to us, and then we put together a nice drive. Uh, you know, we took it down. Once again, we got inside their 10, had a hard time, uh, you know, running anything. And, uh, you know, we're going to try to hit a little slant down there, a seam pass. and. Uh, you know, Jay, unfortunately, I think hit their outside linebacker right between the numbers, and he came up with a big interception for them. And then they would get in the end zone again, making it a 48-12 ball game with about a minute three left to go in the third quarter. Uh, Dwight Bacon gets in on uh, the uh, touchdown run of 15 yards. Dwight uh, hit a little trap play up the middle, and uh, we missed some tackles right in the hole, and the guy made a good run score. And Georgia Southern would uh, try a 22-yard field goal on their next possession. Scott Shelton nailed it. That's a captain eighth play, 63-yard drive that ate up 428. Right, Melvin Cox came in at quarterback and did a nice job running the option and, and made some runs. And uh, I thought Zizou Reem Walden ran the ball hard tonight. He, uh, you know, caught several pitches and looked good and really played hard. Once again, we got inside the 10 and uh, disappointed that we couldn't put it in. Uh, and the next possession ended up in a punt for the Golden Bulls, but then Georgia Southern would get one more score. It wasn't pretty, but it was a touchdown pass that got us in the end. Right, well, once again, we got down inside the 10 and put together a little bit of a drive, and with penalties and mistakes, we backed ourselves up, and uh, Melvin Cox uh, hit Irby on a, on a little backside seam post, and it was good to see both those guys have some success. They worked hard in practice, and. It was a nice throw by Mel and a good catch by him. And that would make the score 57 to 12, and that's pretty much the way the uh, half would end and the game would end. And uh, again, you were getting a lot of fresh faces and a lot of good repetitions, if you will, for some new names. Well, we got a lot of people some looks, and we'll take a look at the film and, and see how they did. And certainly, uh, you know, we'll have to improve and, and do away with the turnovers and the penalties, and we're going to have a chance next week. It was a great crowd and a big win for the first home game of the 2000 season. And we'll take a look at next week's opponent, the Wofford Terriers, after we take this time out. for Georgia Southern Football 2000. Ted Byrne along with Coach Paul Johnson. Coach, you're always talking about taking care of our own business. 
lot of penalties uh, this week that we'll have to get ready for uh, to uh, improve on before we play Wofford, who lost to Lehigh this week. Well, certainly we won't, you know, be able to win another football game if we're going to have 19 penalties in one game. And some we got to clean up. Uh, we open the conference slate uh, next week against Wofford, who uh, we have a lot of respect for. Coach Ayers and his staff do a great job. An offense that is a little bit similar to what we run. Uh, defense, it's a 50 defense. So, uh, you know, the two teams in a lot of ways mirror each other. Uh, you know, we've had some success against them in the past, but uh, we know that it'll be their conference opener, and I expect uh, them to come in and play hard. Had a lot of bumps and bruises in this one. We know Kearns with his knee. Weathers uh, looked like he might have hurt his heel, but the x-rays were negative. So uh, we're, we're a little banged up going into the first conference opener. Well, a little bit with some guys, but all in all, I think we're fairly healthy. Uh, you know, Wofford has eight starters returning on offense, and uh, kind of a new defense. They're almost flipped with us, but uh, they'll come in here and play tough. They always do. Coach, the penalties will be something obviously you work on this week. Well, you, yeah, we'll try, but, uh, you know, we think we felt like we'd worked on them before, but evidently we didn't uh, work on them hard enough. Mental mistakes were the cost of all those penalties here tonight. But we'll have the highlights for you next week of the Wofford Georgia Southern game when we return next week here on Georgia Southern Football 2000. For Coach Paul Johnson, I'm Ted Burns. So long, everybody. Georgia Southern Football with Coach Paul Johnson. Brought to you in part by Coca-Cola. Always Coca-Cola. Rosier Ford, Lincoln Mercury, and Statesboro. The dealership that does business the right way. East Georgia Regional Medical Center. The passionate...